Okay, all, in this video, quickly, I'm going to go through some of the other palettes. So we have all of these palettes here. This is MuseScore 3. Um, click this if you want to start a new score, and it will take you through the MuseScore dialog box. Uh, click this if you want to open a recent score. It will open your recent files under scores. And let's put, get out of that. And this will save your score to file. And then this is to upload to MuseScore.com so that some others in the community can see your work <clears throat> and possibly play it. Um, and this is printing, of course. Un undo, redo, uh, zoom level. And then Muse Score 3 has two, uh, three different page views. Right now we're looking at page view, the first page view. And then continuous view is the second one. It's kind of like in Finale you'll have uh, scroll view, which I probably should do a video on. You have scroll view where you actually, you know, it's just a straight staff, straight staff across the screen and you just go measure by measure and it will give you the measure number and the instrument that you're writing with. This is a good view if you are writing for an orchestra or other large ensemble and page view just doesn't cut it. I've tried both ways and continuous view continues to be uh, the preferred way that I tend to, to write those because I could see it up close. Then we have single page view, and this just is this is a view of the whole first page of music, and uh, it's quite zoomed in there too. Um, this is toggle MIDI input. Now, if this is off, then you can't you you. It's harder to use your. In, uh, keyboard as the MIDI input device. If it's on and it's highlighted blue, then of course. Uh, these are the playback functions, loop, set the marker of how long you want to, you know, loop it, just like that. And then um, here's the repeats many different type of repeats. This is pan score automatically. So this will loop it and it will automatically play from the start place. So I'm going to deselect all of these. Um, <clears throat> this is your metronome. Now if it's highlighted it will give you the tap. It'll give you the click. Sometimes I don't use it, especially if I'm using just the note input view. Right? I just select a note and then boom, there you are. Um, and then these down here, note input entries, step time, repitch, rhythm. Uh, this I would use this over this. Uh, real time, it'll actually have the metronome beat there, and you have to, according to the metronome beat, uh, make your note selections and your pitch selections there. Um, and it doesn't work like Finale's uh, Hyperscribe. You can't just do it and go. It's got to be you got to use special pedal uh, things in order for it to work. Uh, this one, even more so. Uh, this one, you repitch the notes only without redoing the rhythms on accident. And then this is insert notes by increasing 
increasing the measure duration so you can stretch these out and make them more irregular bars or whatever so and then here's all the values of notes um, 128th, 64th, 6, uh, 32nd, 16th, 8th, quarter, half, whole, double whole note, and then longa, which is probably double plus something. So, and then you may have augmentation dots, 1, 2, 3, 4. My understanding is that each augmentation dot divides uh, the uh, the added time that you put into the note by by two, or it, it divides it by two. Um, and then we have this tie. Uh, it says, and then here's the key command plus. If you hover over these, it'll tell you what each one is, of course. And this is the rest palette. So if this changes, then it'll give you that. And then here's double sharp. So uh, B double sharp is the same as C sharp. We have single sharp. We have flat and double flat. And then we can flip the direction of the stems using this key. And then here's voice one, voice two, voice three, and voice four. Notice when you toggle over it, it'll give you the key commands as well. Uh, I think that's shift. No, it's option. Option, command one, option, command two. Option command three, option command four. Okay. Concert pitch. Let's say you're working on a piece that is for orchestra and you have transposing instruments or band for that matter. And you need to uh, switch between sounding instruments and transposing instruments. You could put this on concert pitch and that will make sure that every key signature is changed to the concert key in which you're writing. And then you will be able to um, write your score as like a C score. And then you could toggle this off after you're done and see the transposed work of the transposed instruments. All right. So, um, and then you have basic edited palettes that'll change the number of palettes that you have uh, if you don't have the palettes visible you go to view uh, palettes or you press f9 and this got totally crazy but this is what they are so this is the basic one the advanced one gives you a whole lot more things, and I tend to use the advanced one a lot more often than the, the, the um, simple one. It gives you a lot more choices. All right, so that wraps up this video. Um, if need be, I will break this up into smaller videos that I will record and go over these in depth. All right, this is just an overview, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.